thinkers have been trying to define happiness for centuries and you ask 10 people now you'll get 20 different answers happiness is an umbrella term so you might have one perception of happiness i might have another happiness how do you define it it's a question even scholars and philosophers struggle with how can happiness be measured and how can governments use the data from happiness research to develop policies that can help its population achieve well-being Mike Wyking, CEO of the Happiness Research Institute in Denmark, and Kinley Dorji, Secretary of the Ministry of Information and Communications in Bhutan, is going to help us put things into perspective. Earlier this year in February, the UAE appointed Ahud Al Rumi as the Minister of State for Happiness. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, tweeted that Minister of State for Happiness will align and drive government policy to create social good and satisfaction. This isn't the first Ministry of Happiness in the world. Let's talk about Bhutan. Bhutan is a tiny landlocked country located at the foothills of the Himalayas. It is surrounded by two of the most powerful countries in Asia, India to the south, east and west, China to the north. For centuries, Bhutan voluntarily isolated itself from the rest of the world in a fierce bid to protect its culture and identity. It's a small country with a very strong sense of vulnerability. So Bhutan decided in the past, right from the beginning, that we're going to survive by hiding up in the Himalayan mountains. When Bhutan opened up, we saw, looked around and saw that the world had been through maybe 30, 40 years of what you call development. But what we saw with the advantage of hindsight was that the world was interpreted development purely as economic development. It was GDP. And in Buddhism, we would uh, relate, uh, relate it with greed, consumerism. What uh, Bhutan said was, no, that's not the right goal for human development. Human development needs a higher goal. And the king called it cross-national happiness. It's not against economic development, but we think it has to be balanced with environment, with culture, with good governance. This thought carried over to other organisations and countries. Academics, scholars and think tanks debated over how happiness could be measured and how the data could effectively be used to influence government policy. The Happiness Research Institute in Copenhagen is one such organisation. The Happiness Research Institute are a think tank that works for foundations, governments, cities, where we look at you know, how to improve quality of life. How do we measure happiness? And how do we, for example, design cities and policies, uh, better framework conditions to achieve better lives? The way we have measured progress as a society uh, so far in terms of GDP per capita is not necessarily the right indicators of you know, whether people's lives are actually improving. You know, one thing is standard of living, another thing is quality of life. Politics is about improving the quality of people's lives. And I think there's a growing awareness of that. And I think it's also linked into the growing awareness of the validity and the reliability and the seriousness of the happiness research, which is um, owed to uh, uh, several decades of research within this field. Because happiness is, becomes an individual pursuit, cross-national happiness is the, is the responsibility of the state to create the conditions for citizens to pursue happiness, to citizens to find happiness. This is very important, but this is not a guarantee of happiness. Governments cannot guarantee happiness. Governments cannot, should not be promising happiness, but they should see it as a job to create the right environment. In 2007, Bhutan's planning commission was renamed the Gross National Happiness Commission right before the country went from being an absolute monarchy to a constitutional monarchy. Then they have developed a kind of set of policy tools, we call it, screening. So every policy, new policy introduced in Bhutan has to go through the screening process. Do they meet the four, all the requirements of the four pillars, nine domains, etc.? So inevitably, Things like mining and all get knocked out. They uh, don't meet the environmental requirements. I have yet to hear a convincing argument why happiness should be the one thing we cannot study in a scientific manner. And I think it's since it's what matters the most mm -hmm. to people, it is exactly what we should study and understand better how to design um, better framework conditions for better lives. Which brings us to the World Happiness Report. 
It's the survey that attempts to rank the progress of 156 countries by their happiness levels. The first report was published in 2012. Denmark has maintained a position within the top three in every report released so far. According to the 2016 report, Denmark is the happiest country in the world. Bhutan is number 84. One of the keys to understanding why we do well, uh, why Denmark does well in the happiness rankings, um, because these rankings are based on averages. Um, and I think what the Danish welfare model is great at is reducing extreme unhappiness. Uh, you know, you could say that Denmark is the happiest country in the world, or you could say that we are the least unhappy country in the world. Um, I think what the what the Danish model has achieved is elevating uh, the bottom. Um, there is uh, free access to healthcare. There is free access to university education. There is quite generous uh, unemployment benefits if you lose your job. And just those three factors mean that we lift a lot of people out of extreme unhappiness, if if you want to use that term. In 2015, the UAE was the 20th happiest country in the world. In 2016, the ranking dropped to 28th. It's the happiest country in the Arab world. One of the reasons for that was that Gallup, which captures the data for the uh, happiness report, uh, started to encompass um, non-Emirati uh, people in uh, the UAE. Uh, and they report lower levels than the citizens. The research and indexes published on happiness is far from perfect. Neither are the survey methods. But countries and governments across the world are beginning to increasingly rely on the data obtained from happiness research, along with GDP, to rank their progress on a global scale. You know, I think the biggest challenge or obstacle is still GDP. Because that has led to consumerism, and I think it's, I think we all agree that we are very rapidly consuming the planet. So that pun on GDP is still very, very relevant. You know that uh, that GNH means human uh, human development goal must be beyond GDP, beyond money. We do know that you know what drives happiness, uh, or something that reduces suicides uh, at the end. So I, th I think, you know, at the end of the day, we, we will be able to shed light on the other end of the spectrum with the knowledge we get from happiness research.